Hello, I'm Pastor Serrano of Valley Baptist Church. We're glad you could join us. Uh, this is a message for uh, Sunday, June the 27th. I apologize for the graphics. I know the lighting is not very good. I am traveling right now, and uh, I'm doing this at a, at a friend's home right now, and uh, it's uh, the lighting is not very good. But this is the best that I could do for right now. So I hope you that you would uh, understand. And uh, I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter number 20. No, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter number 6. And look with me in verse number 25. Okay. I'd like to just give you a thought to consider this Sunday morning. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse number 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiments? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not or a ray like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he, shall, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless your holy word. Lord, as it goes out forth uh, on this day, Father, for those that are going to be watching and listening to this message, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak to hearts. I pray that you will draw those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, Lord God, that they may turn to you by faith, repent of their sins, and receive you as their personal Savior that many will come to you and trust you, Lord God, for all their needs, because you care about us, and you love us, and we are more important to you than many other things that we deal with on a daily basis. Holy Spirit of God, guide me and lead me, I pray, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says here that uh, we are not to take thought, verse 31, and the idea in verse 31 that says take no thought has the idea of being anxious, of being concerned. We use the word worry. When we are not certain of where are we going to get our next meal, we are concerned about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and how are we going to be dressed? Where are we going to get our clothes to get dressed? And God says that in verse 32, that all the world seeks after, uh, after these needs. The whole world seeks after these needs. And God is well aware that the whole world is seeking for these things. God is aware of that. And God wants to let us know here in this passage 
that we as human beings are important to him. We are the most important thing to him. We are so important to him that he gave his only begotten son to come to the world and die on a cross to pay for the sins of the entire world. That is how important we are to God. And God wants us to realize that God loves us. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wants us to realize that he loves us and that he gave his Son to pay for our sins upon the cross. And so while we're concerned about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what are we going to wear, God shows us that uh, the animals of the air in verse number 26, they don't, they don't plant corn and they don't reap harvest. They don't have barns. Yet, every bird is fed by God and lacks nothing. The birds that you see on a daily basis are fed by God and they lack nothing. They do not go a day without a meal because God takes care of even the birds. And then God asked the question, are you not much better than they? We are more important to God than the birds, the fowls of the air. God cares about us more than the fowls of the air. And then also he gives us another example here. He says, why do you worry? Why are you concerned about what you're going to wear? Isn't your body more important than clothes? And your body is more important than clothes. And then he says, consider the lilies of the field in verse 28. Those beautiful little flowers that grow on the grassy areas. God compares him to Solomon and he says, Solomon was not even a ray like one of these. And the, gra the grass of the field it doesn't live forever. As soon as the water stops going to the grass, the grass will dry up and not exist anymore. But not a person. God gave you an eternal soul. And your soul is going to live forever. Not the grass. The grass, as soon as the rain stops and the sun comes out, the, the, the grass gets scorched up and dries up and dies. But not you. God gave you an eternal soul. The Bible says that when God breathed into Adam the breath of life, it became a living soul. That means that your body, inside of your body, is a living soul. And that soul is going to live forever. Now, depending on what decision you make concerning Jesus Christ, your soul is going to live forever. If you decide for Jesus Christ, then you want to live forever in heaven. Or if you decide for the world, then you're going to die and spend all eternity in hell being tormented for all eternity because you chose the world. You are more important to God than the birds of the air, than the flowers of the field, and the grass of the field. You are more important to God. You are so important that God sent His only Son. The Bible says in John 3.17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus came so that the world could be saved. Therefore, we are not to be concerned with earthly things that are only pass away, like clothing and food. Look, if you have one meal right now, in a few hours, you're going to be ready for another meal. In a few hours more, you're going to be ready for another meal. But your body, if it dies without Jesus Christ, 
is going to go into eternal hell separated from God. And God is trying to show us through this passage that your soul is more important than what you're going to eat. Your soul is more important than what you're going to wear. Your soul is more important than what you're going to drink. The Bible says that life is like a vapor. Your life is going to vanish. You think right now that you have all the time in the world? But listen, I'm 62 years old and I can tell you, some of you are older than me, but in my own experience, it seems like my life has been like a flash. It seems like I read it in a book somewhere. You know, I'm, I've been married for 37 years and it just seems like yesterday. What I'm trying to tell you is that life passes so fast, you don't even notice it until it's too late. And it is the same way Jesus is coming back very soon. And if you don't repent of your sins and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's going to be a time when it's going to be too late for that. And God is trying to tell you, instead of being concerned about things that don't matter, like how much money am I going to make this year? What kind of a car am I going to drive this year? What kind of a house am I going to buy this year? How much money is my, am I going to make? Uh, what am I going to do? What are my plans for this year? All those things are passing things. But your soul is eternal. If you die without being forgiven of your sins, you will go into eternity separated from God. And you are going to be tormented in the flames of fire for all eternity. Earthly things like food and drink and clothing, although they might be important for the moment, in comparison to eternity, they really do not matter. They really don't matter. God says, this is what all the, the, the lost people are looking for in verse number 32. The Gentiles, this is what the Gentiles seek after. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. In verse 31 it says, Therefore take no thought, don't be anxious for what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. Because this is what lost people seek after. You, you are not to make this the important things in your life. The important thing that you should be thinking about is, where is my soul going to spend all eternity? If you were to die right now without being forgiven of your sins, you would immediately go to hell. But if you repent of your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you and to be your savior, then if you die, then you know you're going to be spending all eternity with Him because you trusted Him before you die. But the time to trust Jesus is right now before He comes back. Because if He comes back and you haven't been saved yet, it's going to be too late. Look, the Bible says, why are you anxious for what you're going to eat? Why are you anxious? What am I going to drink? Why are you anxious? What am I going to wear for clothes? Those things are not important when, when you compare them to eternity. Okay? You, you, if, you don't, if you go a day without eating, you're not going to die. If you go a day without drinking water, you're not going to die. And if you go a day without wearing any clothes, you're not going to die. But if you die without being forgiven of your sins, you will be separated from God for all eternity. God is trying to remind you, this is the important part. Don't be anxious for those things that are not important. Focus on what's important. And what's important is this. 
You need to repent of your sins. You need to ask Jesus to forgive you. And you need to ask him to be, to be your personal savior before it's too late. That's what's important. That is the important thing. God says in verse 34, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Don't even concern yourself for tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. What do you have? If you're watching this video right now, this is all you have. You don't have yesterday and you don't have tomorrow. You only have the present right now. This is the time to repent of your sins and turn to Jesus. This is the time that God is giving you. Use it to repent of your sins and turn to Jesus. That's what's important. Don't worry about tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. Why are you concerned for tomorrow? You don't have tomorrow. You might not wake up from your sleep. You see what I'm saying? So why are you concerned for tomorrow? You don't have tomorrow. You don't have the next five minutes. This is why it's so important to make this the priority of your life. Recognize that you're a sinful person. Recognize that you have offended a holy God. And you need to ask him to forgive you of your sins. And you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your savior. That is the important thing. Not what's happening tomorrow. Not what I'm dressed with. Not what I'm drinking. Not what I'm eating. None of those things are important. Where am I going to spend eternity? That's important. You know, on September 21st, 1997, in Iwakuni, Japan, my life had hit bottom. I was drinking myself away every day. My health was in terrible shape. My marriage was on the rocks. And my career was ready to fall apart. When I finally stopped running from God, I stopped running from Jesus and I asked him to forgive me of my sins and I asked him to be my personal savior. That's the most important day in my life. Now, no matter what happens, I'm not concerned about tomorrow. Why? Because I'm in the hands of God. I belong to Jesus. Why should I be concerned about tomorrow? If God wants to take me home now, I belong to Him. I gave Him my life. I repented of my sins. And I trusted Jesus as my personal Savior. I don't live with my concern of where am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to be wearing? How much money am I going to be making? What car am I going to be driving? Those are not important things. Giving your life to Jesus is the most important thing. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That means that he makes you into a new creation. I went from being an alcoholic to being a brand new person. God healed me from the drinking. God healed me from all my whatever diseases I had, he healed me from all those things, he gave me wonderful help, bless my career, bless my wife, bless my children. I'm living a dream and it's all because of Jesus, not because of anything that I've done. God did it all. And I'm trying to tell you that he can do the same thing for you. Whatever you are into, whether it's drugs, alcohol, pornography, immorality, living a wicked life, whatever it is, God can heal you from that. And God can restore your life and make you into a new creation, can make you into a new person, a person that he can use for his glory. He can make you into the father you need to be. He 
can make you into the mother you need to be, the son you need to be. You don't have to be ashamed anymore. You don't have to be embarrassed anymore. You don't have to worry about being hung over anymore. None of those things matter because God will take you and make you beautiful in his precious time. But you have to give God an opportunity to do that. God is not going to force himself on anyone. You have to be willing to let God do that with your life. And this is how you do it. You simply have to humble yourself wherever you're at, get on your knees, bow your head, and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm a wicked, vile sinner, Lord. I've done so many wicked things, Lord. I know it, and you know it, Lord. Father, would you please forgive me of all my sins? Lord, I want to trust you as my personal Savior. Would you use me, Lord? Can you use a druggy, Lord? Can you use an alky, Lord? Can you use a wicked person, Lord? You know, when I came to Jesus on that September 21st, 1997, I told my wife, how can I get close to a holy God? Look at me, I'm a mess. How can I get close to a holy God like this? And she told me, you need to come the way you are. And I said, what? You mean God will take me like this? And she said, he will take you just like that. And my friend, come to Jesus exactly the way you are. You don't have to do anything because I promise you, he's going to do it all. You don't have to do anything. He's the one that's going to take care of you. He's the one that's going to clean you up. He's the one that's going to shape you up. He's the one that's going to make you into a beautiful person and a beautiful creation. You don't have to continue living the way you're living. You don't have to be suffering anymore. All you have to do is come to Jesus and give him your life. My friend, would you do that today? Would you repent of your sins? And will you ask Jesus to come into your heart? Will you do that? Don't wait any longer. Why wait? Why suffer? Just bow your head, get on your knees, and, and humble yourself. Will you do that? I pray that you would do that. Let's pray. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are watching and listening. Lord God, if there's a person out there, Lord God, who wants to be saved, Lord, don't let the devil stop that person from coming to you, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, draw that person to you, Lord God. Let them humble themselves. Lord, you can forgive any sin, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, for salvations. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would bring more disciples to yourself. Thank you, Lord God, for saving my soul. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. A wicked, vile sinner. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. I pray, Heavenly Father, have mercy on those that are making decisions right now. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. The Lord bless you. I pray that you made the right decision. The Lord bless you.